Hi guys, it's Essentially Meg, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the age-old question, who do you invite to your wedding? So first you got to think about the size of the party that you can throw. So a lot of times that's dictated by the location that you're renting for your reception or your ceremony itself. And destination weddings are usually significantly smaller than hometown weddings. So when I'm thinking about who to invite to a wedding, especially a destination wedding, I like to think of guests in kind of like tiers. So tier one is like the absolute must-haves or the definitely's that you would put on the list. So close family, really close friends, the wedding party, that kind of stuff. Tier two would be more of the extended family, friends that you've made more recently. And then tier three would be more like, say, work friends or your mom's hairdresser or a really distant cousin. And so you've got to think about the number of people in each category and the number of people that you can actually host in your location. And if you're having a destination wedding, there's always the cost to consider. There are going to be some people who won't be able to come due to money or health or just travel related reasons. It was your decision to have a destination wedding and there are trade-offs. It's their decision whether they can make it or not. But if you are the wedding couple that's having a destination wedding, you need to make sure that your guests understand that they're not going to offend you if they can't make it. But the nice thing about a smaller group means that you can have more quality time with each guest. And in the case of a destination wedding, you definitely get more time because you're there for multiple days with them. Think about who you would care about seeing in your wedding pictures 10 years from now. The people that are closest to you at this moment and hopefully will still be close to you in a decade. Another thing to think about is your cost. So while you may not be paying for their stay at the resort, you are going to be paying possibly for a wedding package. And a lot of times those packages are contingent on the number of people that you're expecting to have. And I mean, the general rule is bigger weddings mean more money. <laughs> So I'd encourage you to look at all of the packages available on your resort's website and see if the one that fits your vision of the day with the number of people and everything fits your vision of your budget. Are you able to afford a package that has 25 people or 50 people or 100? And if you go over that specific number for that tier, what's the per head cost of an additional person? What would be the break-even point of moving up to the next level, even if you don't have that many people? But if, like me, you still want to have a big celebration with lots of people that you love, maybe consider having a back-home reception. This can be a picnic in a park or a full-blown second reception, depending on your budget and your style. So this hometown wedding reception, you should definitely invite everybody that you invited to the original destination wedding. But be understanding if they can't make it to both the destination wedding and a p another party a month later. And I would say follow the traditional rules for this guest list. Especially if you have somebody helping you pay for the wedding, make sure to take into consideration their wishes. So maybe mom's childhood best friend might be coming. It all comes down to the size of the event again, but it's more likely that somebody will be able to come to a back home reception as opposed to a destination wedding. So whenever you're sending out the invitations to that extended family, you might be more likely to get a yes to the uh, back home party. But you can keep this one small too. Maybe there's one half of the family that wants to come to a destination wedding and the other half of the family you'd prefer to just celebrate at home with. To keep it simple for ourselves, we're just inviting everybody to both options and they can choose if they want to go to one, the other, or both. And even with sending invitations to everybody, we're expecting probably 30 to 50 people to come to the destination wedding and more like 125 to 150 to show up to the back home reception. But if you go this route, make sure that it is clear in your save the dates and your invitations that these are separate parties and you will not have a ceremony at your back home reception location. We'll be sending our save the dates really early, which is customary for a destination wedding. People need more heads up. I've actually made a video all about save the dates and what needs to be included on them. And uh, you can check that out in the link down below. But what I think we're going to do for the full wedding invitations is we're going to include two separate invitations in that envelope and one's going to have all of the destination information on it and one's going to have all of the back home reception information on it. 
so they can see that those are two separate parties. Well, I hope that you found this information helpful and interesting. If you did, uh, give this video a like and subscribe down below. And the question of the day is, is your wedding or was your wedding smaller or a really big affair? I want to know like how many people about and did you prefer it that way or do you wish that you had gone larger or smaller? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.